Starting your own fashion brand is insanely hard. And for Guillermo Irias, it was genuinely an uphill battle every step of the way. Guillermo was born in the Honduras and he was raised by a single mom who did not think a career in fashion was a smart idea. During his entire journey, he did not have the emotional or financial support that he needed. But Guillermo is one of the most hardworking, driven, and passionate human beings I have ever met. And he was not willing to let anything come between him and his dream of being a fashion designer. Which is why now, at the young age of 30, he lives in New York City and he works on his brand, Gia New York, full time. I'm So Heidi, founder of SuccessfulFashionDesigner.com and I teach fashion professionals like you the real world skills you need to get ahead in this cutthroat industry. And in this Successful Fashion Designer podcast episode, Guillermo takes us behind the scenes to walk us through step by step everything he did to build his successful fashion brand. I was lucky enough to interview him in person at my home in Denver, Colorado, and so we videotaped this podcast interview. If you prefer to listen on iTunes, you can check out the audio version here. I was confused. I, I had this situation of being by myself, doing my stuff as a creative director and designer just for Gia for so long. And I was trying to think if that was the moment to jump to a job in a company. Mm. Uh -huh. And, you know, the pressure of money and all of that. So I, that was mostly about the, in the email, okay. like basically. Okay. <laughs> um, so... Are we already talking? Like It's recording. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I'm not sure when I'm going to start the, the interview. Okay. I mean, I might, maybe, maybe. I might use this beforehand part because sometimes this is always what happens. Okay. Every time I do interviews in person, I just hit record right away. I don't tell uh -huh. the person, okay, uh -huh. I'm recording because then it's like, <laughs> right? You know, the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, oftentimes, like, the pre-interview ramble is awesome. So, yeah, it might start. It might have already started. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. I was, I was trying to avoid the situation that happened in the show, but it happens. Okay, so tell me a little bit more about, like, Gia from the beginning. Like, okay. where did this all start? How long have you been doing this? Like, I don't know any of the background. I just know right. you're this amazing man. <laughs> Thanks. Met you in New York City, and, like, yeah. here, here we are sitting in my backyard doing an interview, which is so exciting. What post, an honor. Yeah, yeah <laughs> post-Massive Fashion Week, your show last night. So take us Before. back. Yeah, all take right. us back um, to the beginning. Okay, so um, should I introduce myself? Right, right. Yeah, Guillermo. Yeah. My name is Guillermo. <laughs> <laughs> My Guillermo Irias, like Americans call me Irias, in Spanish is Irias. Um, I am a um, Spanish Latino designer coming from Central America. Um, I created my brand when I was, uh, actually when I finished my bachelor's in fashion, and that was probably 2012, yeah. Okay, so about six years. Yes, officially, that was when Gia came out. So Gia was my, in the beginning, I was trying to think in a small name, like it was kind of difficult, you know, I didn't want, so I went to fashion, right, four years for a bachelor. And then I also got um, an associate in, in marketing. Okay, where did you do school? In Costa Rica. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. And I am from Honduras, okay. and my market, uh, my marketing um, background was in in Honduras. So I went to uh, university in Honduras for marketing. So putting those things together, I was thinking, you know, in the marketing area, how can I call my brand if I want to be Guillermo Irias? But it was too long. It was Guillermo Iria. Sounds nice in Spanish, but when it's like in, uh, in other countries, it's like kind of difficult probably to remember the name. So one day in, in that situation that I was having, I had a dream. This is going to sound very cheesy probably, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I had a dream. In my dream, it was this woman who I was talking to. She was telling me that I should be very perseverant. And keep dreaming and dreaming and I will one day have what I want. So when I woke up, I was thinking, what a weird dream, like that was so weird. And in my dream, her name was Gia. I never watched any movie about any Gia or anything. 
for being honest with you. Okay. So I went to Google immediately and I just typed Gia and I found out Gia Karanji. Yeah. The, that's the top model the from model. the 80s. There's a movie yeah. made after her yeah, on like Netflix or something. Yeah, yeah, it's all, it. yeah it's all over. Yeah. It, it came out in 1995. Yeah. Like 1994 or something like that. Okay. that the movie. Yeah. Uh, with Angelina Jolie. Yes. Uh huh. So. I saw them. I saw the pictures of uh, Gia Karanji. I was like, mm, I'm not sure if that was the face, but it, it, this is so weird. Like, you know, everything was like kind of random for me. And then Gia, it was just like the initials of my name, Guillermo Irias or Irias Irias. And then the A was something that like. I didn't know how to explain. And I was thinking, what about if I call it Guillermo Irias Atelier? Oh my gosh, it's perfect. Uh -huh. And then that, that fits. And then I was like, I think I, I got it. <laughs> uh, how am I going to call my brand Gia? And then I started with everything. That was probably in 20, 2010, kind of like that. Okay. Uh -huh. And, you know, it, it's a long process, labels and the uh, legal situation with the brand. Um, so I was very young. I didn't have the opportunity of someone telling me what to do. I didn't know what I, what I was doing. I was just doing it. And I am a dreamer since I was 12 years old. I wanted to be a fashion designer. There is some things that I see in other people that there is some designers that they just go to school because they like fashion, like fashion lovers. I like to create. I like to make it. I like to see it. it that's probably one thing that it's different with other designers. Some designers, they are okay just designing and sketching. In my case, I like to go to the end and see the product and see and be involved and all of that. And I think that pushed me to be to be to keep dreaming and dreaming and dreaming and getting more goals and everything so since i was 12 i was sketching no one in my family was coming from a fashion background yeah i was gonna ask like no where one, did no this one. come from no just... my, my family it's um doctors lawyer um complete i opposite. even have a priest my okay. uncle is a priest yeah and yeah my mom it's in economy and uh, um, business thing and nothing like that. So no one really told me what to do. So, and also my family was skeptical. They told me fashion is going to be difficult, tough. You are never going to buy a house because it's so difficult to be successful as a designer. Yeah. And when did they start saying this kind of stuff? Like you said, because you said when you, when you were 12, you started sketching, like you yeah, really started yeah. expressing this. Yeah. And I didn't say anything until I finished high school. Oh, you kind of kept it. But, a my, but bit. They, they knew, you know, okay. they, they knew that I was into drawing stuff. OK, but they never thought that I, it was like a real thing. That it, you would want to turn into a career. Yeah, in okay. high, uh, when I finished high school, I told them, well, to my mom, my mom is a single um, mother, and I told her, I think I want to be a fashion designer. And I, it was very serious, very serious situation. Yeah. And she said, no, you are not, because that's not going to be a good future for you. Because she, you know, she was thinking about as you know, all our parents, they are th yeah, they they want their kids to be good and to have a good future and everything. And over there in Latin America, it's kind of tough because there is not industry like here. Yeah, here is different. Here is yeah. like a lot of companies, a lot of business, real business in fashion. Over there is just a lot of designers trying to make it. Uh, so many third world, so it's different. Works different, and. So I went to architecture for one year. So I got 15 classes actually in a year. And I quit, I hate it. It was, it, oh my God, I, it was bad. I mean, I was good in the classes, but for me as a human, I felt bad. So I quit architecture and then I followed my dream. I left my house and I went to Costa Rica. 
and it was difficult, but I got it. And yeah, it's, it was just the beginning of something that it was very intense. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I want to, I want to hear a little more about that moment yeah. because mm -hmm. I think that like a lot of people out there listening are in a very similar situation where you were yeah. in terms of they have this dream. It's been something they've wanted to do since they're a kid and you know, their family may not be super supportive or think it's the best option to pursue. Yeah. And here you are then also living in Honduras. I mm -hmm. mean, like you said, that's another challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, you just said, I'm going to make it happen. I moved to Costa Rica and it happens. I mean, it, was it that simple? <laughs> no, no, no. Talk a little bit also, about like how you really got that kick started and you were able to go there and go to school. Okay, so first of all, one of the difficult situations is that being a fashion designer is a, it's the people, society, they connect being designer with being gay if you are a man. Okay. So if you are a fashion designer, you are a homosexual. Yeah. And then, you know, it's a this cliche situation and I am openly gay, but at that time I was closet. Okay. So I was terrified yeah. about, about being, you know, accepted as a fashion designer and connected to my sexuality, which is supposed to be something very private. Yeah. So, that pushed me also to leave my house. It was two things together. Okay. That my, my dream in being a fashion designer and also because I was a little boy, closet gay, yeah. uh, it was kind of tough. Yeah. Um, uh, so I jumped from um, my house to other city in Honduras. I was living with my cousin for like a couple of months and then I left. And then I went to Costa Rica and I got a job in a library and I think that's how it started. Okay. Like, yeah. And Why did you choose Costa Rica? Because there is no fashion school in Honduras okay. uh, until now. Okay. There is a, a, a good university that they, they carry the, the, um, the career now, okay. but at that time they didn't have it. And so Costa Rica had one that looked they have, pretty yeah, good. Yeah, there or? is many college that okay. they have it. Yeah. yeah, and I think it was a great opportunity. It's kind of different culture. They speak Spanish, but it's kind of different at the same time. You have to be there and understand how that works. I actually studied abroad in Costa Rica. Yeah. Yeah, I oh, studied cool. at a Costa Rican school for three months. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but but anyways, so. Okay, so you go go to Costa Rica for fashion school. Yeah. Was it a four year program? Four year, yeah. Okay, and mm -hmm. how was it? Um, <laughs> well, I can compare now because I went to FIT. Oh, okay. So, All right, I didn't know that part of the story. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I came and I went to FIT. Okay. So I got uh, two years in FIT. Okay. It didn't make sense for me after all that trouble that I had and all the money that I spent going back because if you compare an, an associate with a bachelor, uh, you can be fine if you have an associate and you have experience. Okay. But me, I had experience and I had an, uh, a bachelor, four years in, in college, and also I was in architecture, and also I was in marketing. That was too much. So I, I, I decided to go to FIT, and I took two years. Okay. And, yeah, I can compare now. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of different. Like, yeah. the way that when we design in, in Latin America, it's different than here. The process of production and everything, how you, you know, the development of everything, it's, it's different. Okay. Yeah, and I, I, this is more about language and culture. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How did you get from Costa Rica to New York? That's a big jump. Well, Costa Rica, that was just for my... Um, studies but then I came back to Honduras okay and then when I come back to Honduras I try to make it real I knew how to make all you know garments and design so in the beginning it was a little difficult because you know to afford the first collection yeah um, the label situation the brand and everything um, everything was coming together and can I ask how you funded it savings okay you did let me yeah let me tell yeah. you let me tell you how i did it i started to make dresses for friends and saving money it was so tough this is during college um or a little bit at after. The end, okay at the end and after when i came back to honduras 
friends of me, like, you know, friend, uh, friends of mine, sorry, that, uh, that I knew, um, they just told me, uh, you know, my cousin, my sister, someone needs a dress. You think, can you make it? I was so scared, like, because I didn't want to hire a sewer, a seamstress. I've been very oriented to be my, to make it from, from scratch by myself. So I, I'm that kind of designer that can go to Project Runway because I know how to make it. But by the way, I'm, uh, I don't want to talk about Project Runway. <laughs> but, that's a different interview. Yeah, that's a different situation. <laughs> but so I made these dresses and I started to save money. And then I had a friend also who I borrowed money from him and, and, and he helped me basically with a substantial uh, uh, amount of money to make my, my first collection and then I pay him back, okay, of course. And I think that how I put it together. Okay, you paid that him back. Once you had made the collection, did I you, made, you sold pieces. Yeah, yeah. How were you selling the pieces? So I had the opportunity, uh, let me remember, I, I made three collections when I was back in Honduras. Okay, after Costa Rica. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I made three collections, and then one of them was my official collection for Honduras Fashion Week. Okay. That was like, let's say, my when I was born as a designer, okay. like a famous designer in Honduras. Yeah. And then I went to uh, Fashion Week, and then after that, I got an invitation from two stores in shopping centers, and then I had the opportunity of, you know, start making production. Yeah. Like I made like 600 pieces. Oh shit. Like big, big amount yeah. of pieces. Whoa, okay. At that moment, to I- To sell retail through these stores. Yeah, okay. it was, it was, yeah, to retail. At that time I paid back my friend and I started to see a little of money. I would say that it was not easy. What I would do is, you know, I would see and find where can I make that amount of, of uh, pieces? But those 600 pieces also, they came out because in Honduras, after that, after I came back, right, they were like a Project Runway contest, but it was not Project Runway. It was like, a, it was this retail, big retail. Okay. It's not, it's not the retail that they had already my, my, my contract for selling. This is a big retail, like let's say Macy's, but it's just in, in Honduras. Okay. It's a department store. Okay. They did uh, this contest for trying to find a designer. I, I was like, skeptical. A friend of mine sent it to me through Facebook. I was like, mm, I don't think that I'm gonna do that. Uh, I'm not sure. Next day, I applied. I said, I, they, so I remember that to apply, you have to make a, a look uh -huh. and take picture, post it in the website and Facebook. It was on web, uh, yeah, in the fan page. Okay. Yeah, and post it on the fan page and whoever got more likes would be in the contest. Oh, so it's a little bit of a popularity contest yeah, to get yeah. accepted. Kind of difficult, right? Like, yeah. So I made this blue dress with long sleeves, I remember. Um, print. I remember the sleeves, they were print. I always been print, like uh, very in love with print. Uh, I got like 800 likes. And Where did they all come from? Were they all your friends who knows? or what? You don't no, even like, know. No, because it's, this is a department retail situation, you know, like they are all over. Okay. Like so many people saw it, so many people gave like. It went on their fan page. It was not my fan page, it was oh. their fan page. Okay, gotcha. And then yeah, their, like, the people that follow them got to essentially vote. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. And then, so there were 60 designers. Oh. Like with so many likes. From 60 uh, designers, they choose 40 at the end. From 40, they choose uh, 20, something like that. And then slowly they went like, you, you know, getting rid of everyone until they have five. So at the end, they did like something like kind of project runway. They call everyone to come to the capital in Honduras. So I traveled because I didn't live in, in the capital. Because you were one of the five. Yeah, I was one of the five. Okay. And uh, I think my mom at that moment was, she didn't care about what was happening. Really? Basically. No, like, 
yeah like she didn't believe in the situation she mm. didn't believe in my f in you know in 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 a future for that for being honest yeah 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 and i think so many people go through something like that they probably do. yeah so many people how are you, how are you feeling in this moment i mean and i can completely you, can you ignore I ignore everything okay and so you're just so hyper focused on your dream yeah 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 and where are we at in the timeline when is this happening this is Roughly. 2012 okay yeah okay yeah 2012 yeah okay yeah so so i went to the contest right uh it was about to make four looks in paper with paper oh a paper fashion show yeah okay. yeah uh-huh and to make the pattern and, and to make it look real but so it was actually made out of paper paper yeah okay and so that moment three people won i was one of them so they get rid of two at the end these three people they have to make a runway with real fabric so they gave us like a three weeks to make uh i think it was like um eight looks something like that okay it looks was this being showcased on tv or were they just sharing it on they Facebook? were recording everything okay i didn't know what they did with it with all of that material like i Oh, you still, you don't know? It never, I, I don't knew know? that they, it was like in, in, in media, like a uh, uh, press, like a okay. newspaper. I saw it in newspaper, uh, in, uh, on TV, but after like one time, it didn't come out again. So it was okay. just, it was just like that. So the last one was, you know, three designers. Um, so I won. And... <laughs> It, How I, can you say it so casually? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't believe that was happening. It was just, you know, I will tell you I was alone in that. Like in, 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 in all of that I was doing. What do you mean you were alone in it? Because I didn't have the support of anyone. No one in your family? No, no. Any friends or? Uh, my friends, yeah. Like my friends, they believe in me. Like I yeah. had a very small group and they, I believe that now they are like, wow probably because I jumped from nothing to to that to so much yeah yeah so I won and they gave me I think they gave me like a 5,000 something like that in cash and a contract for a season to sell my name in a retail department sell so, your designs yes okay I didn't I wasn't I wasn't involved in production at all okay. what they did is they the a looks that I had they made it. They so took the samples. They just took what you had done on the runway yeah. and they just made yeah. it. They took the samples and they just made production. Okay. Mm -hmm. How did you feel about that? So happy. I, I didn't mean, believe it. Yeah. I, yeah. I was like so young. I didn't know I was what I was doing. It was a dream. And yeah. I came to the stores. I took pictures. I, it was Guillermo Irias, like in in in, in a department store. That was crazy. Like wow. Yeah. That's do you have some pictures of this? I do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'd love yeah. to like put them with the with the show notes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sure. So yeah. we'll we'll get those afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So you win this big contest, and your your designs are now like in department stores in production. Is your family starting to to believe come a little? To, yeah. be, to believe a little. A little. Yeah, a little. Yeah, like, oh, oh, wow. And I, you know, I also I, I won like contests in, in doing Halloween costumes and things like that. You were doing a bunch of like, other stuff at like, the same time. Yeah, trying okay. to you know to make creative stuff. Yeah. So after that, I go to Fashion Week. That's my my boom. Honduras Fashion Week. Yeah, yeah. Is that a pretty big event there? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, it's like the most um, famous people they do it. So and it's very society so, uh, situation also, which I don't really like. But you have to deal with that as a designer. You know, you have to meet people with money and all of this. And yeah, it was like a society event and showcasing my first collection, a lot of newspapers, a lot of magazines. That was so incredible. And I was so excited and happy. And after that, I got an invitation for New York Fashion Week. They found me, who knows? You don't know to this day? I think that's social media. Somewhere. I've been very yeah. oriented to marketing because, yeah. you know, I got yeah. my, my marketing background. I know your Instagram. You yeah. got like 40,000 yeah, 40, yeah. on Instagram. I have yeah, so you've many got followers. a good following. Yeah, because I'm very ma I'm marketing designer 
oriented. Uh, who knows? Like I no, like, but that's I really like, good because a lot of designers they've got this amazing eye and the creative side mm -hmm. of things, but the promotion is really. You have to have the promotion and the marketing. Yeah, yeah. You have to put yourself out there. You have to sell. Yeah, so you yeah. have that. Yeah, yeah. I like to sell. I, yeah. I think the only that I can sell is dresses. Okay, Men, so menswear is too tough for me. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> and your, your dresses are beautiful. We saw Thanks. like a dozen of them last night. How many pieces were there? It was just 10 samples, but... 10. Yeah, no, but just a lot of 10. work. Let's not say just. <laughs> they were phenomenal. Um, and we'll include pictures of, of your show last night. Um, Thanks. From Massive as well in the show notes. But... Okay, so you get an invitation from New York Fashion Week. Did they call you? Did they email you? Like, what was that moment? I so wanna... I got an invitation from this venue. I don't, I don't know how many design. Uh, I'm sure like there is so many designers that they do independent shows. They're probably watching this. Okay. They know that uh, after IMG released New York Fashion Week, there is so many venues. I didn't know that. I was in Honduras. I was like New York Fashion Week. Wow. Yeah. But right now, it's so many people doing shows. So these people who contact me, it's, it's just a venue from somewhere. Like, and they run Washington, D.C. and New York. Okay. So I got an email with an, a formal invitation that they want Gia. Uh, it was just Gia because the New York didn't exist. It was just Gia. Guillermo Irias Atelier. My labels, they were completely different. My logo was different. It was just, gee, a different thing. And I got an invitation. They were telling me to come to New York Fashion Week to showcase my collection. It was a medieval collection. That was my first official collection. Okay. Like, I, I, yeah. I always been very cape designer. Like, I like capes and all of that, uh, you know, um, long trains and all of that. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's kind of your signature. Exotic things, yeah. Yeah. And they were, they were very into this kind of style and everything. And I was, I think I was like kind of impressed about the invitation, but I don't know. I think I was probably doing so much stuff. I got the invitation. I told my mom, I remember, we were in the... Uh, in the backyard, we were talking in the patio. I, don't, I think something like that. Patio, and we, yeah, yeah, the patio. And we were outside, and and we were talking about it. And and I told her, I got an invitation for New York Fashion Week. And my mom was like, What's that? I was gonna <laughs> ask you if she even knew what it was. Yeah, she is not a fashion woman. Yeah. Okay. She's a hard worker woman. Yeah. An amazing person, with a beautiful heart. Uh, she's incredible but she's not very into fashion so somehow that's why she was skeptical of everything but she was in front row for fashion week in so, Honduras yes okay so in that moment that she went with me to fashion week she believed it and Aww. she told me yeah I can't believe of all your talent I am so happy and that was the moment that everything changed yeah the moment that my mom was in fashion week sitting there looking at the collection so she didn't know what to do when I told her about the invitation because we are not coming from a rich family we are like a medium class um, and coming from New to New York sound like a expensive collection like paying so much expenses you know how Guillermo will, is going to do it, how he's going to make it. Um, so she was like, oh, that's so great. Oh, my God. And but just like that. And me, I was thinking, mm. a week after, I got an invitation from Canada. You're Another, blowing up. Incredible. Like, oh, my God, how, what's happening? So I got an invitation from Canada to showcase. And I choose Canada. Okay. Okay, let me tell you. I am a Christian gay person. Okay. I believe so much in God. God is in me, in my, in my life every day. I pray every day. I, I'm coming from a religious family. Okay. It's Catholic, and, and we believe that, you know, that we have our roots in the Roman Catholic history and everything. Um, and so... I just pray so much and I was thinking 
something is going to happen about this. Like, I don't know what's happening. And I applied for the visa for Canada, and they didn't give it to me because something happened in the process between my invitation and when they approved the, the, the visa. So it was too short time. You send everything to, uh, at that time, to Guatemala, I think. It's a, another country to apply for Canada. Okay. So you send everything through DHL or something like that, a courier. And then when they got my, my um, papers and everything for the visa, it was too late for the show. You had to get a visa just to travel to there to, to visit? Yeah, to Canada, yeah. To show. Yeah, yeah, Like yeah. on a, yeah. air quotes, vacation yeah, to yeah. show. You had to yeah. get a, you, uh, okay. Yeah. So, I know that. So they didn't, it was too short term, too short term to send back the, the visa, so it didn't work out. And they just probably told, they, I think that's why they said, like, in the, they sent me a letter that was not possible to make it, like, so I didn't go to Canada. Okay. And I got invitation for U.S., so I never was very into to come to America. For being honest, you sorry, you were never what very interested in interested yeah, in, coming in, in coming to, to the U.S. To, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Why? I was very into Italy and oh, France, Europe, Europe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I wanted to go there. Like, okay. Okay. <laughs> and I don't have. I didn't have family here. Okay. So how am I gonna do it? Like, what I'm gonna do here alone? Yeah. Isn't right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and my family, there is no. Well, my I have someone who. Um, now lives in Alabama, and but there is no immigrants from from my family to America. Okay. So it was kind of hard for me to you know to think about it, and well, anyways, I applied for the visa and they gave it to me. So now you're going to show at New York Fashion Week. Yes. Okay. It wasn't too late to do that. No, no, I had time. Okay. I came to D.C. for a presentation with the same venue, and then I came to New York with an invitation from Miss. Dominican Republic to sh um, to wear my pieces in a photo shoot. Miss Dominican Republic. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh huh. So that was my first international photo shoot, and it was a lot of things going on, right? And wow, that was amazing. And when I was there, I went to FIT and I saw the school. You visited I, the school. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I fell in love with uh, with everything, and I I decided that I I think. And I, now I can tell you, like, that was the, the right decision to do. Okay. Because in those countries, in our countries, um, they are very, they have, you know, they are dangerous. They, it's, it's, it's kind of difficult also. So I decided that probably I will have a better future in, in America as a human, as a gay person, and as a designer. So I went to FIT. And then everything came together. I got, I got to know, to meet the most beautiful people over there, and so talented people. I met people that they were working in Saks, and they were working in retail. They were working in in the industry, working for Sack Posen. And then I got internships. I started to go and do internships for free, even though the school didn't require. I would to just do random internships. And I went to uh, Denis Basso, Monique Lulier, uh, so many places. Like, I wasn't able to work because I didn't have my, uh, I was a student, so I didn't have my, you know, my situation in, like, paper, which, you know, in here. You were there on a student visa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just gonna go and just learn and work. Yeah. One day, I came to this one, to this internship. It was just three weeks. Very short Very interview. Short. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just three weeks that they needed someone. And Guillermo was able. I will always say, yes, I want. Yes, I want to learn. I want to go and just learn. Uh, it was kind of difficult also because I was alone. I was depressed somehow. I, was, I used to cry. I was living in Harlem at that time, yeah. I remember, in New York. And I was kind of depressed because I was, bring, I was coming from a different situation. Like everything was going amazing over there, and in, the, in, Honduras. in Honduras, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, everything was great. You were on the top. Yeah, everything was great. So I decided to stay here, and because, you know, it's cool. I I thought that it would be better. Something inside of me would tell me you have to learn, Guillermo. 
to be a better designer because what you were getting there it was okay but I think you can get more. Okay, I was gonna ask you, after all that experience and after all those fashion shows and then getting invited to New York Fashion Week and all this amazing success, mm -hmm. you still felt like there was a gap. Something missing. Something, and uh -huh. you felt like FIT could fill that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So, I come to this company and they told me, okay, we are so happy to have you. We know that you are a designer. This is a pattern making position, but also you're gonna be in charge of a special project, okay? And uh, I was, okay, that's great. What am I gonna do? This, a, okay, this is a costume place. They make costumes. Okay. And, okay, that sounds great. What are we gonna do? Let's start. <laughs> I'm dying I, to know. <laughs> yeah. So they gave me all these, you know, like uh, um, um, cutting uh, sheets and, uh, you know, all of this that we do in, in fashion. And so, I saw the cutter mast and everything, and I I'm, I see the technical drawing, and it's like Asian costumes. Oh, that, that's kind of cool. I was like, that is so cool. I'm wondering for what is this? They make a lot of things for Broadway and and shows, shows and, and yeah, all that. Yeah. I really wanted to know what was that. That day, two hours after, I got a um, how do you call it? disclosure? Uh, an, an NDA, uh -huh. a exactly. non-disclosure agreement. Non-disclosure, yeah, that okay. you shouldn't you say, can't say anything. anything. Yeah. I saw the fabrics already, so I took pictures of the fabric. I am a fabric lover, you know, like <laughs> I saw the fabric, Guillermo took pictures. Oh my God, that's so beautiful. <laughs> and so I took the pictures and I get the, the document after that. So I sign it. That. Are you thinking at this point, like this might be a big deal? I didn't know. No, no, I you thought that was part of the policy. Okay. Like, you know, some companies, they okay. are very sure, picky sure, with sure. that. Okay, sure, 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 yeah. So that day, they call everyone from from my team. I was I was the head from the team, right? And so sewers and the pattern maker and me, they come and they said, this is a special project for the company. Guillermo is going to be in charge of these eight looks. Um, as the intern, as they're intern, giving yeah. you really big responsibilities. Yeah, yeah, not, like, yeah. But it was papers. a lot. But it was a lot of people involved. Also. Okay. Yeah, there were someone also supervising what I was doing. Okay. So. But that's still a really big opportunity as an intern. I think it was amazing. Yeah, a lot of people don't get that. No, I think it was. A, I was. I was luck. I also. I was get, I was getting non-paid. Like you were working. No for money. Free. Yeah, yeah. So there were no money involved. Okay. You know how this works. I know how it works. In the fashion I industry, know, right? I know. There is so many people that they, you know. Yeah. Had they seen your portfolio and they knew what you could do and so yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. they were I think like, This I, is the guy. Yeah, and yeah. He's doing, gonna do it for and free. he's not asking for money. Wow, this is a big deal for the company, yeah. right? Okay, okay, I got it. It was Madonna. What? So Madonna. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I am like <laughs> what? No way. No, this is not possible. Madonna? No, no, no. She's one of my favorite singers. Oh my God, this is so exciting. So, yeah, so she has a big, you know, people, like a lot of people working for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a costume designer. She has five costume designers. Um, they were one that she will come to the studio to check everything. It was three weeks, non-stop working Oh, probably like 16 hours that was crazy and that was for the rebel um heart tour rebel heart tour yeah okay uh-huh uh -huh. like it happened like uh that was in 2015 2016 okay no 2015 yeah okay because i came to to america in 2014 14 and so you're like middle of college yeah i was yeah middle I was, of FAT. yeah i was okay. getting just having stuff like free jobs you know like like no money, but learning. Uh, I would say like that was like, that, okay. In the production situation, making the costumes, they were difficult, but the sewers, they were doing it. Okay, you were I, doing the patterns. Patterns, yeah. I was behind the patterns and, ev and supervising that everything looks good and everything supposed to look like how they want it and things like that. And just putting an eye, basically. And, but, they were so amazing. The sewers, like, you know, uh, the experience was more like uh, my first, my beginning doing celebrity situations. Like, wow, okay, I was involved in there. 
He was not Gia, but who cares? Yeah, I mean, you That's just made experience. costumes for Madonna's yeah. Rebel Heart Tour. That's cool, no? Kind like, of a big deal. Yeah, right? Yeah. It was, I mean, it was not under my name, but... If it doesn't, but... Yeah. All the all all the designers that they are listening, they know how fashion industry works. Yeah. Like they work in so many companies, and and at the end, it's just about experience, than if your name is in there or not. Yeah. So, yeah. So and then, okay, I did it. I did that. I was so happy. Um, so many people knew about it. Um, I continue. I finish with my program in FIT, and. And then I found out that probably my future was staying in New York. Yeah. So I kept having more internships and having jobs on the side. Like So at this point did you, you got a work visa or you I had already yeah. So it took me a year after um like yeah, after I finished my program in FIT. Okay. So uh, yeah, like uh, eight months. So I started to apply um for being legally here yeah. and be able to work. Okay. It didn't work out. That's what I'm going to tell you. Like the, the working situation, I apply, I, I apply for jobs, but I don't know. They were not like the kind of job that I wanted. Like it was not the kind of job that I wanted to do. Yeah. The money is not enough. And I thought that it was too much work for that kind of money. Like, yeah. So were you still doing Gia on the side? Yeah, hard. Like you so, were. Okay. Yeah, so hard. Like, okay. Yeah. And then so after three years staying here, I do my first collection and doing jobs on the side, uh, making custom made. Okay. A lot people. of custom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was not a lot of custom made. It was just few. What you could do. How I found these people? Um, websites. What do you mean websites? Like Craigslist? What are you there doing is, here? <laughs> I even did Craigslist. You did? Yeah, I you did. You put ads up. Yeah, but I didn't say, you know, that it was it was my name. It was just I offer a service as a costume made, like okay. costume made. Yeah, so did people reply? Trying to see. I didn't know what the fuck was Craigslist. Like, I, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what is Craigslist? I didn't understand that. Like, what is Craigslist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, of course. Yeah, yeah. Coming so, from Honduras, yeah, you, like, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, you learn. So I offered my service, like making custom made in, in Chrysler. I didn't like it, how it worked. So I But you got some orders. Like, a, I think I did it like three times. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, for, I think I made a, a, a sample once for a company that okay. they were looking um, someone who can make it, you know, in the rush. And then I found out that there is independent web, um, apps that you can as a freelance you can do jobs oh. and then i started to teach teach where teaching private like oh just private yeah, lessons yeah 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 what were you teaching people everything pattern making sewing sewing whatever whatever will just help guillermo to keep going yeah so i just, just pay the bills keep yeah, going yeah yeah so i started to teach and then and in the same app they randomly people contact me can you make me a dress i was like what is this app it's it's for freelancing it's called uh wisent wisent do you know w y z a n t no no wisent yeah okay. wisent. Well, i'll take a look i'll put it in the show notes yeah it's, okay. it's, it's like for freelancing jobs okay and so, and so opportunities were coming yeah like some you no know, kind of weird and like I don't know. Weird stuff. I even but like did. You do I, it. Listen, I even did catering, in a luxury catering. Yeah. That I, I, I was wearing like a tie, you know, black tie and tuxedo and all of that. Yeah. Because I didn't. You gotta pay the I, bills. I, I you gotta had make to money. make it work. Yeah. Like, I had to make it work. Yeah. So, and then I started to save money. I think I started to save money when I was just working since um, for my, some internships that they gave me like a hundred bucks, like a, just for metro car probably okay like, yeah, yeah, yeah randomly and so slowly saving money and making some dresses here over there like someone who i met these people this couple from that they i would say like this is my first client and i keep this client as a um luxury as a you know some people say like 
you need to remember your first client. Yeah. And I remember my first client. Yeah. Is, is this man, um, I'm not going to say his name. Okay. But he... Is, so he's known. People for, would know him. It's, it's, a, it's someone who is very well known in, in New York. Okay. And, and I think in, in the country. Okay. And I met him the first month that I came to New York. Because a friend him? of mine, uh, a friend of mine had family in New York. He told me to meet his family. And so I met his family and she was working, doing some working like in, in a house for her, for his girlfriend at that time. Okay. Uh -huh. um, so I came to the apartment, right? I met him and he told me that he needed help for styling. This is a, a wealthy man. And I was like, okay, yeah, I am a designer. Of course I can do styling, like whatever. If I can make you look better, like, you yeah. Know. And that was my first client. And then he got married last year and I made the dress. He you got did? Yeah, 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 for his fiance. They got married in the Hamptons. It was a big dress, like long train. If, Anyone goes to my social media, they're gonna see that I am I, that kind of designer. I make like long trains, big dresses, like that kind of stuff. So you met this guy through in the a beginning family in friend New York. in the first month you were in New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you did some styling for him, mm -hmm. and now just and I kept working years, for him. Okay, you did for him for all the time doing all, styling, I like keep, helping him dress I, and stuff. He's still my 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 client. Okay, and, and they then you know made, now that how how everything is now, and they. They are, they don't, they are like surprised, like, yeah. Sorry, who's surprised? Um, my client. Your client, what are From, they surprised about? Because, you know, in the beginning, they didn't, they didn't know that I would go to FIT, actually. Okay. Oh, they knew you that I You had like just gone here from Honduras. I, they knew that I was a designer, but a designer coming from a third world is like, yeah. oh, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, there's some, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's a cliche. Sure, totally yeah. cliche. Yeah. And then you just made his his now wife's wedding dress. I mean, yeah, yeah, that wow. was that was one of them, and that's how I was just doing jobs like on the side, and doing, so, doing yeah. I cannot tell you how many things I did, like so many things, just to make it all happen, yeah, just yeah. to keep going. Yeah. yeah, I was even assistant for someone who was. Um, a, we a wealthy couple. They are like a senior wealthy couple living in the Upper East Side. She used to be a designer and buyer for Macy's. Okay. I am so impressed of how God works in my life and how he put everything together and how he put me people in front of me to just complete everything. It's incredible. But you've also worked very hard. Yeah. You have like, and I don't discount any of that, but mm -hmm. like, you know, there. I think there's little things that you've done to keep pushing, to keep going after your dream, mm -hmm. to yeah. put yourself out there, to figure out a way to make this happen. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a lot of points you could have just given up very easily yeah, yeah, and walked yeah, yeah, away yeah. and like gone to architecture school and okay, I don't love it, but like I'm still maybe, you know, arguably you could say that's still design, mm -hmm. a, a, even though, I mean, I shouldn't say arguably, it's definitely still design, very different from fashion, but yeah. you could have, all these moments you could have, you know, stopped, but mm -hmm. you didn't. And um, even when you didn't have support, so, you know, you you've pushed really hard to make this all happen. Mm -hmm. And then like taking this risk to yeah. move to the United States. And yeah, yeah. And like you said, figuring out how to like make it each week to week, month to month by, okay, I don't know, I'll put something on Craigslist. What the fuck is Craigslist? I don't know, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, um, I just tried to make it work. Yeah, like, you did, but you did. I am did. that kind of person. Like, yeah. yeah, I tried to make it work so hard. Okay, so, so, and then in the meantime, are you doing collections for Gia and that's, showing? That's when I, I start to make my first collection in America. Okay. And when I already know how it works, I know about all the process of product development. I, I learned in FIT. I saw all the process, so I, I know now how to speak in America, how to call the stuff. Uh, this is a cutter mask. This is a... Uh, uh, um, sample room like sure we, all the terminology yeah you know everything and the draping terminology and all of these that i needed so that helped me 
to just keep going, like on the side, you know, like me as a, as a person who needs to speak with people to make stuff. Yeah. And, but since the beginning, I've been very involved with the, um, making the sample making. So my first collection, I made everything by myself. It was, um, so I made women's wear and men's wear. Okay, and this is like what, 2016? That's Ish. 2016. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. So Two years see, ago. Yeah, that's my first one. And then I made the next one in two, uh, 2016, 2017. I didn't. I made two collections already. This is my third collection in America. And yeah, I started in 2016, saving money, buying uh, rolls of fabric in the garment district, talking with people. Can I have a better price for that? Can I, Negotiating. <laughs> I know, you know, yeah. I know, the, I know how that, you know, I can, I can tell like some people they hate it. They are like, oh, this is probably a um, Brock designer. Like he doesn't have money looking for, for you know, that's the beginning. You're yeah. looking for, for um, affordable fabrics. But okay, everyone needs to know that in the garment district in New York City, it's so expensive. Yeah, it's retail prices. Oh my lord! Like it's like yeah, you're paying seventy triple sometimes 70, what you should. Seventy bucks for a yard of silk that you can get it in in overseas for eight dollars. It's ridiculous. It's yeah, just so much. I can tell you, like in that moment, when I started to make the collection, that last time that I did my last internship, until now. It's so much what I learned. It's so much what I what I know. I I've been very involved in everything because I had to do it by myself. Yeah. To bring back Gia and and to keep you know to keep my dreams stand like in what I want like uh, or where I want to go good to go and come. So I was okay. I'm gonna make everything by myself. I'm gonna be the sample maker, the pattern, the pattern maker. I'm gonna be the <laughs> the technical designer. I'm gonna be the creative director, the fashion designer. I'm gonna do everything that in a small independent company usually have like twelve people. In Honduras, so, did no, no, you I'm have talking people about, doing it for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I had people. I had people working um, with me to do tailoring for menswear. Right. I mean, not the the production that went into the stores. That was obviously outsourced to like a yeah. factory. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But like your your collections there, you had people in Honduras. You, you mean, had people helping you. You mean designing or what? Like doing the pattern making and the sample making and all that stuff for the initial collections. Yes, and then when you I, would get an order of like the 600 yeah, pieces, have, that I goes to the factory. The first collection, the first two collections in Honduras, I made all the patterns. And the third one, I had a pattern maker helping okay. me for menswear, which is, I'm not very strong in menswear. Okay. And more designing than, than pattern making. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so then here in the U.S., you were like, you're, you're, you're doing it all. Yeah, I okay. made everything. Okay. And, and so that was my first one, right? So I made everything from the baby hems. Like, oh my God, that was so much work. I can tell you. And not, not <laughs> only that, because I was working, I was just doing the collection. I, I had to do something on the side also. And I was teaching, I was um, making costume, making um, everything. Like I've been doing so much, show, so much stuff that I don't remember. Yeah. So uh, I made the first collection and that pushed me to meet people. So I started to meet people. I started, you know, to just, that's when I did New York Fashion Week in a very like low key venue. Okay. For being realistic. Yeah. <laughs> Not the shows. Yeah. <laughs> so I was, but I was so grateful, like God sent me this woman who was um, the owner of this venue. She contacted me. She said, Guillermo, I love your collection. And but when she said collection, that was a collection that was two years ago. She, had she found you on social media? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I've been very active in social media nonstop okay. since, since so then. So like Facebook, Instagram. She contacted me through Instagram. Instagram. Okay. And she said, I love your collection. I'm going to have a spring summer. That was in 2016. I, I'm wondering if you have something new that you want to showcase. That, that was probably like three months before of that. 
and I had already, I, had, I bought fabrics and everything. That pushed me to make it. So in three months, I made everything. So September comes, it's New York Fashion Week. I come with my first collection. I even included some looks from uh, when I was in Honduras. Okay. Because to remember, I was selling in Honduras, in shopping centers. Were you still selling Be in 2016? No. Okay. I when so after seven months that I just I was here in America, I closed my my contracts with with retail, and I, I told my family, please go and bring, take everything. Oh. Because I'm not gonna come back to pick up to to take all of that. I'm not gonna go. Just okay. help me go and take it everything. Okay. I didn't know how was the stock. I didn't know what they were taking back, it was just so messy. Why uh, didn't you want to let it just keep selling? Because I, I needed to be there, to go to meetings. And okay, to manage it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I so needed you just to felt talk like to people, like, yeah. I'm, it's and, not working, I'm too disconnected. Yeah. And then there is discount season, and, there, and, no, and you have to talk to people in person. Okay, I understand. And, and because I was, you know, young designer who doesn't have a sales department right i have you, to deal your with that. sales yeah so <laughs> i do the sales also so that <laughs> i know how this works yes yeah so i i i decided to just know this is too much and in that moment i was depressed like living in 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 uptown in manhattan i was just coming back from fit and i would just grab a huge beer in the grocery you know like yeah, in yeah, new york yeah. there is the a bodega. bunch of bodegas yeah. in, in, un, under your building so i was just i was living on top of a of top, of top of one and so i was just pick up one beer and i would just go there and every night i was i was drinking i was just depressed because i didn't know what was happening and this is you had shut down gia in honduras yes and like, you just kind I of stopped, fell dark i stopped gia and, yeah. and i was but i knew that i wanted to just keep studying but I didn't know what's gonna happen. Yeah. And in a country that I didn't know anybody alone, no friends, because in FIT, honestly, mm, you, don't you don't make, make that many friends. Like, no, it's like everyone is pulling in their own way, you know. Yeah. Like, mm, they know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. So, uh, yeah. So, um, that was the point that I stopped everything and not selling anymore. So I come to the first venue in New York. Um, mm, not very like a boom, you know, like a very, no, not very good venue. Yeah, what part of town was it? It was in a nice space, but it needed lights, it needed more like uh, production stuff. Okay. It was a nice space in 37th Street and 8th Avenue. In the garment district? The garment district, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I showcased with a bunch of independent designers like you know people trying to make it also yeah so that was the first time and then after that denver found me and then i fall in love with denver so so massive fashion week they, reached out to you they found me yeah okay. they, after new york fashion week because i i shared what i did in new york fashion week but what i liked not not everything yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i had a new collection and the season was coming so they they were like you should come to to denver like you have a brand so in that moment i was still gia guillermo irias atelier because i didn't know what's gonna happen yet and labels you know i even saw labels in my garments like i do everything well now it's different like i can tell i can tell you more yeah uh, i want to hear more uh, yeah. but yeah but keep going. yeah so I came to Denver as the first time for the second edition of Massive, fall in love with the people, so different. It was my third year in, I think third year, yeah, living in America. 2017 then? 17, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. yeah. And I saw already how the culture is like, and the difference in, in, in Latinos, Spanish people living here is like, they get to meet more people talking uh, speaking Spanish or they are in the same culture in between them I wasn't I was just alone and so no one so we I will just talk I think that's why I'm more like uh, my English is better probably because I would talk a lot in, in English more than Spanish okay no I, I don't speak Spanish with anybody basically so that pushed me to just meet the culture the New Yorker culture that you know is different it's completely different it's 
work, 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 going there and back to home. And that's it. Like, <laughs> there, there is no friendly situation in, in, in nothing. Like, I really appreciate when someone is selling me a yard of fabric and is smiling because it's so hard the, in, in the garment district. You know, they are like, hey, dollar. Can I have another color? And I am a very friendly person. Yeah, you are. And I'm like, can I have another color? I don't know, man. You can check. Really? Okay. I know. That's exactly how it is. Yeah, it's so bad. But it's different also when you have a, um, a showroom that they treat you well. Yeah. But, you know, but it's expensive. Yeah. Anyways, so I came to Denver in the second edition of Massive and I fall in love with the people. Yeah. I saw that um, Massive, it's a family. It's, it's this creative situation happening here in Denver in a in a different city where, which I really like the, the weather is kind of similar to New York yeah but people is different I don't know like, like that, how that I think like people is more like warm it's more okay. friendly more it's friendly. like they care more about you like in New York I feel like they don't care about you like yeah. <laughs> they care about what you do your product in New York is more about what you do Oh, they than don't who care you about are. you. Yeah, than who they you are. They care about the, the show and yeah. the pieces yeah, yeah. and the, the... Oh, interesting. Yeah, what a beautiful collection. But who cares about Guillermo? Oh, interesting. Like, yeah, I, I think that's what it and is. And you come here and, and you feel like people care about you. Uh, I think you you feel it like and I, I went to other, another cities and I saw, you know, the difference and it's kind of yeah, I can tell a difference. <laughs> OK, so Denver is not uh, and a fashion yeah like scene. especially coming from new york yeah. you might think one might think mm -hmm. denver why what? why Denver? yeah so were uh -huh. you skeptical at all yeah, to yeah, make yeah. this big trip to bring yeah. all your stuff and i mean you know we we've changed a lot over the years but like we have a stereotype as like being a cow town yeah yeah really yeah, yeah. like farms and stuff yeah 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 well so what were you thinking um you know I am a very marketing also oriented, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They <laughs> offer me a good product. Like, you know, the venue. Okay. Looks good. Yeah. Like, I was, you had seen photos from the previous I shows. saw it. I saw it, yeah. Okay. It was the second edition. They they had the first one. They did it great. They do. It's yeah, beautiful. So, yeah, it's they did it great. Space. And being in New York allowed me to go to shows and see shows. So I'm not there any uh, all the time when it's New York Fashion Week because I have to survive and work. But when I can, I go to see shows. I've been in the shows. I saw the venue. Wow, it's so cool. It's so expensive also. And I've been in so many venues. Just you know, checking. I, I see what, what they do. Uh, I got invitation from so many venues until now in New York. I compare prices. I compare packages. Like yeah, talk a little bit about that because I don't how think it that works. people not, Everyone knows about this. Like, yeah. No, they don't. Yeah. No, yeah, not everybody. Oh, you said, yeah, yeah. not yeah. everybody knows. People no, don't no, know that no. like when you do a fashion show, mm -hmm. you pay. Yeah, yeah. Can you talk a little yeah. bit about that for a few minutes? Uh, okay, yeah. Um, so when you are ready with your collection, probably well, some of them, some designers, they don't have that collection ready. Yeah. But, you know, venues, they invited you because they see what they, you did already. So you get invitation from so many people. So that's something that I would like to share also. Like, you should be aware where you're going to go to share your collection. What kind of collection you are making. In what point of your career you are. What kind of garments you are making. Because there is some venues that they charge a lot. And if you make underwear and it's like a very simple polyester, a stretchy fabric and just tiny situations, you know, tiny garments. I don't see why you, you're going to pay $20,000 to showcase. That's so much money. Yeah. So you got an invitation, right? You're going to have an invitation. You need it to be inside of the venue. Yeah. And then you got a package. There is packages, gold, platinum, and uh, platinum, um, silver. Silver, sure. um, Bronze, whatever. Venues, they call it different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, different prices. So you're gonna choose one that is that it works with your budget, right? Yeah. Um, some, some venues, they are like affordable. Some venues, they are very expensive. In New York, uh, 
mostly everything is expensive. Very expensive. Yeah, but there is some venues that they are cool, they look nice, yeah. and they have affordable prices. Okay. I was able to go there, and, and, and they are kind of similar than, than Massive. Like, same prices, like, kind of similar. But the people is different. Okay, and the other thing that I really, that I am very con um, aware is about this big movement of bloggers, right? Because used to be buyers, like a lot of buyers, they will come and you will meet people and do accounts and meet, you know, somehow, like... Right, like part of the point of fashion shows used to be, used the to main be. point yeah. was you obviously, okay, you pay to show, whether yeah. it's 5000 or 20000 or whatever the price is, you pay. Well, it still works like that in right, right, big right. venues. Right, right, right. Yeah. And, and you, get, you get professional photos, depending uh -huh. on your package, right? Yeah, you'll yeah. get photos, maybe you'll get video. So then you have marketing materials yeah. to promote, but mm -hmm. also media is there and retail buyers are there. So you hope to get new accounts and write orders. Yeah, so, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah it used yeah. to be. Yeah, yeah, it used to be like that. But now... Because it was, you know, it was controlled by just one organization. Yeah. IMG, yeah. that was who was taking care of that. But now, IMG, right? That's how, how it's called? Yeah. But yeah. So now it's just all over so many venues so everything gets a little messy because you don't know what to expect. That big dream of having an expensive collection and then what are you going to do with that collection? Yeah. You're going to, you expect that someone is going to buy it. In that, that was my expectation in my first collection in, in, when I was in Honduras. Like I, I was like, okay, I'm going to meet people. People is going to buy my dresses. But no, it's more like exposure. You're going to do whatever you want with that. Now, there is some venues that they really have buyers. Okay. And I am aware of that. Okay. But they are very expensive. And right now, they are out of my budget because they are very expensive. And when I say very expensive, I'm talking about $45,000. Wow. That's a lot of money. Yeah. There's $60,000. It's, it's a lot of money. So to be there, you must be rich. Well, or you know, have yeah. a good business partner. Yeah, <laughs> you need money. Yeah, and fashion, this is something also that everyone should be aware of it. Um, I think I am a very, uh, God made me strong through a very difficult situation in my life um, that happened to me when I was in, um, in Central America. And I think many people get different situations that they you know that they can make you a better person a stronger person in a different way uh i think everyone should be aware that fashion is a very expensive career and you need to know what you're gonna do what you wanna do schools they should tell people that there is so many ways to to, to end it up after you finish school and they don't do that they they definitely don't do that they just, you finish and you are a designer, but what about if you want to work in a magazine and you want to just write? Like, you can do that. You are a designer. You can do that. Yeah. Uh, but what about if you want to be a creative director or if you want to be a um, technical designer? Like, there is designers that, you know, te doing technical jobs and uh, product development. There is so many people who are doing so many sourcing stuff. Sourcing specialist. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Customs coordinator. Like, you can be yeah. a lot of things. Everything. So, if you are independent, if the dream of all designers is having their own stuff. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Right? A, lo a lot of them. Most yeah, of yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, like having a, ro a wrong way. Yeah. Like being in the wrong way, walking. It's not being just at the end of the wrong way. It's making the stuff. It's yeah. making the garments. It's being involved in everything, in all the process. And if you are someone who is a fashion lover and likes to just look nice, this is not for you. Like, that's, that's, that's what I wanted to tell everyone. Like, when I meet people, like, oh, I want to be a fashion designer. But, and then I just, you know, I, I like to be quiet and just listen. And, and they ask me for my opinion. And I see a lot of talent, like a lot of people with so much talent. And I'm like, wow, you should to be doing this, like now right now like but there is people like they are just fa fashion bloggers so they should be doing be doing like uh, blogging 
you don't have to go to school and make your parents to spend that much money, you know. And being in a, at the end of the runway is it's just like the candle in a cake. But to have that cake, you have to make it. You need ingredients. Mm. And you have to be involved in everything. Everything. Production, pattern making, not sleeping. There is a lot of hard work. And if there is no hard work, it's not going to happen. No, it's, it's not. not. going to happen. Yeah. And I think that's something that it really is part of my life. I am I'm just... I just like the hard, the hard shit. <laughs> you love it. No, the, the, yeah, it's yeah. work. Yeah. But like it's, and, and we've talked about this, this sort of concept has come up multiple times on the podcast before of like it, the work and the process, you should love and be so passionate about it that it is almost an extension of your being. You yeah. have to do it. You physically cannot Avoid not it. do it. Yeah, yeah. You have to do it. You need to be involved. Yeah. Or it's not gonna work. And if and if you're not feeling that, then you should really reevaluate. Yeah, yeah. And that's true for I think anything in life. Yeah, yeah. And you know, yeah, and also it's not like we want people just to to stop dreaming. Yeah. It's just to be realistic. Yeah. It's not easy and it's not gonna be easy. Yeah. Even for me right now that everything is different than when I came here. Yeah. Like when I was living in that tiny room in, in Harlem, in, in upper, in, in, you know, in uptown in Manhattan. Yeah. Uh, I've been living in seven places in New York. You know, New York's crazy. And, but because, because of that, because I wanted, you know, I want to just keep going and keep going. I push myself so much. So, that, I think that's, that's why it worked. Yeah. Now I have my studio. I don't have to do any other kind of job. Thank God. It's just, I am 100% in fashion. Yeah. Um, before I got my studio, I was working in a, a luxury brand, okay. by the way. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is last year. What were you doing there? So last year, that's how I was able to afford my first, um, my second collection, basically. Okay. Because I was doing a lot of freelancing job, doing tech packs and um, doing product development with them. Okay. So... I was working from my house, from my, my apartment. Um, my apartment, it was just like a fashion tiny studio. There were no living room. Yeah. Nothing. Like yeah. It was just sewing machines, mannequins, and I was sharing with someone from Washington. And she was fine. Like, I told her, <laughs> I, 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 I posted on Gypsy Housing. I don't know if you know how Gypsy Housing. I'm, I've heard yeah. of it, yeah. yeah. It's just to share um, space. The space in New York. Yeah. And... Uh, I remember I said in my post, uh, whatever who is gonna come has to be fashion lover because there is fashion stop in the living room. Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Bolts of fabric, yeah. mannequins, yeah, 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 yeah. everything. So I had so many mannequins and I remember I got my first mannequin when I was in Harlem. So that was my first apartment. I didn't have a lease, I didn't have social security. So I just got this tiny bedroom and I was paying uh, a lot of money, but it, it was just a room month by month, okay. know, month to month, like how yeah, they yeah, call yeah. it. And what I did is, this is what I did. Listen, I bought a sewing machine on Amazon, a brother sewing machine. I love brother, by the way. And and <laughs> not, are you doing, not an affiliate? Do, no, yeah, <laughs> I'm not doing uh, <laughs> marketing not here. Not sponsored. <laughs> and I bought a mannequin. A very cheap dress form and I had a futon and that was me that's it so I had a very a very tiny futon and I was sleeping in a very tiny bedroom that you are able to touch all, uh, all the walls it's like a closet yeah basically. you know how it's and New this York. is very typical yeah, yeah in New York you live in a crazy. closet yeah so it was my futon a mannequin and a sewing machine and and I did it because I said to myself myself you need to keep dreaming and this mannequin every day is going to remind you that who you are, who are you coming, like where are you coming from and where you want to go. And I, I will wake up and I'll see my mannequin every day. I will go to FIT, do random stuff to survive. And, you know, I was tough, but that was the beginning. And then I jump and jump. I, I, used, to, I, I used to live in 
Harlem and then I went to live to Upper West Side and then West Village and then Brooklyn and now I live in Brooklyn and I'm so happy. Yeah. Yeah. And you have a separate studio space. Now I have a, a, a commercial studio. And you're doing Gia full time. Gia full time and, and I change my labels. I throw out my labels, the last ones. They are different. I still love them but What's the difference? Everything's different. Do you, you do G in New York, right? Now, yeah. Now I see everything in a global, in a global way. Okay. Now I see it, everything has changed since I came. Like, yeah. I met so many people. I went to so many internships. I learned a lot of product, a lot of product development. I see how luxury works. Last year I had the opportunity working in a, in a, it's like a, let's say, it's a small, it's, it's, it's like a small brand, okay. but they have money, they have budget. Okay. And they have PR and they, they are like eight people working in the company. Wow, it so is it's, small. So it's very small. Yeah, but they're doing well. And they are doing well because they have budget. So they have dresses in red carpets, golden gloves, um, Emmys and all of that. And I had the opportunity of coming from someone who found me on, on a website for freelancing and so she found me and then she contacted me and she randomly told me can you you understand uh, tech packs and then I said uh, what do you mean like read tech packs for what uh, because her, her question was so weird like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah like yeah can, uh, can you make a sample part of a tech pack following the uh, um, specifications or you know how to make tech packs? And I said, yeah, I know how to make tech packs. I know how to make garments from tech packs. Yeah. So I came to the to the studio and that was the beginning of, uh, it was just, I, I was there for a year. Can you say who it is or no? Um, if you don't want no, to. No, I want to avoid that. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, so I was there for a year and everything was great. Like yeah. I learned so much and the designer is, is from Paris and it's 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 great and they are making beautiful stuff and and i was working in the production department okay. basically like yeah. dealing with a lot of things with factory and making stuff with them when they had like samples coming wrong from italy oh because they made everything in italy so can you imagine it's a it's a good budget yeah yeah and they make all the samples and, and some production in new york and so i I was dealing with a lot of that, like communication with factories and, uh, you know, production department. Like, that's what I was doing. I didn't touch that much sketching or things like that because they have a very small um, designing uh, department. It's okay. just two assistants and they will taking care of that. It's so you're doing more technical and development? I was just okay. development uh -huh, yeah. and, and technical and, and I got a lot of... Um, experience good experience yeah like a it's year huge. doing uh, a year doing that and then um so that you know that pushed me to see gia in a i have more followers than them by the way like <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> yeah I, but because i'm a very marketing guy like yeah yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and and you know i see and also they make great stuff so it's just you know how social media works some people they have so many followers but they are not Really, like big, big fake news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, and it's, it's confusing. Versa. It's somehow it's very confusing. confusing. Yeah. So yeah, social media is confusing. Sometimes it's just a number. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and I met people in New York, designers that they have 300 followers and they sell in Bert of Goodman. Yeah, yeah. So, no, so, it's very true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, according to followers, the followers don't make you. It's it's like, just you know, a number. Like, yeah, it's just it's, it's what a, it is. It's yeah. just a number. I, I've heard a lot of people refer to it as it's a vanity metric. Yeah, and I have followers because you know, they like my dresses and that, and yeah. I post pictures and that's it. Yeah. Like that's the only that I do. And well, beside that, so I met another designers. I went here. I went over there. I see how they work. Uh, I got inspiration doing some, you know, like. I think I learned how to. Um, manage my my company mm. but so at that time it was just ideas and then this year i went to to do that legal thing i hired someone who know i, I have no idea how i didn't know how to even do my taxes so it was my first I time i really know how to do taxes yeah, I, yeah. it was my first time <laughs> doing my taxes and 
and I was thinking, but I some I need someone to help me. Yeah. And I need also someone to help me with Gia because I see Gia big. And I don't want to keep going as a Guillermo. I want to keep this dream as a company. And there is some designers that they work, you know, as a sake name. Like, that's how they call it, right? Like a, Oh, like um, a pseudonym. Um, like, no, like a, oh. they, they call it by themselves, like... Um, Kelvin Klein, for example. Like, oh, the brand uh, yeah, is their yeah, name. The brand, uh, yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, somehow I don't like it. Somehow I like it. Or something. Yeah, yeah. So I prefer to be under a, um, a brand. Okay. Mm -hmm. And being just an employee, like that's what I. That's how I see myself. I see Guillermo as an employee of Gia, and that's how I. I actually do with my budget now. Ah. And that's uh, yeah. That's you know everything is getting together. Okay. Uh. So. I did a legal thing for Gia, and now it's a legal company, company in yeah. New York, in the state of New York. And I can hire people now. I can have interns, and yeah, it's great. I'm Everybody so out there listening in New York, <laughs> internship yeah. opportunities. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, I have, I have actually two openings for interns. Do you? Yeah, and I can tell you, like working in a small companies, it's much better than working in big companies. Why do you Be say that? Because you are someone. In big companies, you are no one. That's what I saw in, in internships. And you got to learn and see a lot more pieces and parts of the process. Yeah. I, I still need to learn, you know, like uh, you never, you, you never stop. You never stop. Like, yeah. like how I found you, for example, like you are incredible. Like I am in <laughs> love with everything that you do, like because you help, you help so many designers that they, we, get confused like like me like I, I get confused so many times with um, illustrator for example like you are a master in all of that <laughs> you're so sweet so, Thank you. so yeah it's just you know everyone gets a different kind of strength yeah and because I did so many internships and I saw how they work and I I was in this I'm not gonna say where but they make beautiful luxury fur and so I wa and they make also ready to wear beautiful dresses and they do the shows uh, this designer he was in 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 since he's doing shows since 1970s he is well known in New York but it's a big company and I was there for an internship it was a long term and designers they didn't even talk to me mm. like you are no one and I was in the um, product development also department like pattern making production you know trimming situation and you are you are no one in a big yeah. company and I don't like that like yeah. and also because I like to be in charge also right <laughs> <laughs> and that has a price being in charge has a price and you need to work hard to be in charge if you want to do that. Yeah. Some people, they don't like to be in charge. Some people, they are okay. Just, yeah, just it's make, not for everyone. Just make money and, and, and have insurance and, and you are stable because yeah. that's another side of the story. Like yeah. being, having your own stuff, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You are just working hard to pay bills, to pay rent. Rent in New York, it's so expensive. Yeah. Having a studio, it's so hard. Yeah. I can, I can tell you. So can you talk a little bit about, um, like, what changed or what, what was the tipping point that allowed you to go to Gia full-time to get the studio? Mm -hmm. and, and sort of two-part question, um, can I ask? Like, yeah, anything. Wait, yeah. Okay, yeah, you're a pretty open book, yeah, which yeah, I really yeah, appreciate. Yeah. Um, I mean, I tend to ask. Sometimes people don't always tell. But, um, like, where are your sales coming from? Are you doing direct-to-consumer online? Mm -hmm. Are you doing cu more custom? Are you selling retail? Like, what does this all look like? And what was that tipping point that allowed you to go full-time and okay. get the studio? Okay, well, so okay, so now I do a lot of overseas. Overseas? So, yeah, I overse uh, yeah, I do overseas production. Production, right, okay. Production. If I have, like... Um, um, people asking me for three or five or six. I mean, I get small orders. Okay. Like people listening this, they work probably in big companies that they get 500 orders. Like, no. When you are independent designer, and I'm talking about independent designer, including 
CFDA designers. There is a lot of CFDA designers that they don't sell that much, but they are part of the CFDA community, right? I think all of us, we want to come there some one day. One day. Um, at, at this point, right now, what I do is I do a lot of custom made. That's how I make everything works. Okay. Yeah, I do a lot of bridal. I do a lot of um, evening wear. Okay. My clients, they come from online. Yeah, I oh, advertise. They're not yeah. even necessarily in New York. No, no. I get clients asking. I, I even ship to Denver. What? Yeah. Here we are. Yeah, yeah. I uh, last time I made a beautiful dress for someone who uh, contacted the brand. Contact the brand, not contact Guillermo, Gia, because that's what I like. I like to be just you know, someone like someone working in the in the brand, like like how all the brands they work. Yeah. Like, companies they start like that yeah so and yeah I get clients like people asking me for dresses from even I got a client this uh, like a week ago someone asking me for uh, to make a dress for um, Finland Finland yeah yeah oh yeah. wow I have no idea like where are they coming from it's, Mostly it's, Instagram it's, or? It's, it's because I advertise on Google you advertise, yeah, paid yeah. advertising. Yeah, yeah. Okay. To my to my website. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. So, I, I advertise. Okay. And and I get clients looking for custom made dresses and things like that. Okay, but then who's what's happening overseas? Are you having these custom made dresses or yeah, being I made do, overseas? I, yeah, like for example, like some clients they ask me to make um, bridesmaids. Okay. I make everything, and I love bridal. You but, make it. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. I make Guillermo. the sample. Yeah. Okay, yeah. you make the sample. I make the sample in New York. Okay. So the sample is made in New York. Production is made overseas. Those small order, eight, ten pieces, three, five yeah, pieces. Yeah, ha I have a, an, a a gray, gray, gray factory. That, yeah, you do. Yeah, that. They, <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> people are gonna be emailing <laughs> you asking. Yeah, <laughs> I will tell you something. I met so many people in FIT. Okay. I know people that they work in big companies, and they are probably listening to this podcast, and they know me. Okay. And they don't like to share factories. No, nobody likes to share factories. I found I found my factories by myself. You did. Yeah, and anyone who wants to make it work, do it and make it work by yourself because no one is gonna go to your door and give you everything. No. And did that's you what just I learned. Google like, and you just searched and yeah, yeah, called yeah. And do it like you do whatever do you have to do. Yeah. To make it work. Yeah. And that's what I did. I did research. I don't speak Chinese. I don't speak uh, Mandarin. I don't speak the language. I just try to look for it. And, and that's how I found it. And I found these amazing people um, that I love them so much. And they are incredible. Obviously, they do mistakes. Obviously. And they do bad mistakes. They, they are not like in the... Uh, they are probably listening. I'm sorry. But... <laughs> 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 but they are so great and I love them. They are hard workers and and, and they are so talented. Yeah. But you know, I understand when you are doing overseas and you are not in the atelier and you are not there, it's so difficult. Because I even me, I have a client telling me that she wants a custom made dress and I'm making the pattern and I am probably doing the draping and I am like, mm, but maybe she wants something different in here. Like maybe she wants that weights a little bit over like you know, like different, maybe she wants to see the seam, maybe she doesn't want to see the seam. So all of these things that you put in a, in a tech pack, like seams, descriptions, and everything, all these details, it's different when you are making gowns. It's a different thing. Like making tech packs for a gown, it's intricate. It's a, it's a, yeah. how many pages are, like, it's 20 it, pages. I mean, it, you've got so many detail my, sketches. My tech packs are, are different than yours, Yeah. by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Your tech packs are amazing. They are so complete and beautiful. My tech packs are more essential. Okay. What they need to know that they can, uh, they don't get confused because too many stuff they can avoid a lot of things in like uh, evening wear couture and all of that it's more difficult so it's better to make it in a in a in-house atelier that just making a sample in the overseas that's 
difficult. Very, you know, I understand. You're gonna, There's too many things that could go wrong. Oh, so you many. You have to make the sample like so locally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then send them that. Yeah, and, and then, then they, that's a reference garment. I understand. Yeah. yeah. When you get so, to a certain complication of a garment, mm -hmm. you just have to do that. Yeah. yeah. So I get, for example, what I do overseas is uh, production for bridesmaids. Okay. Yeah, brides looking for A12. I don't, I'm not going to make 12 bridesmaids in New York. No, that doesn't it's make not, It's yeah. not worth it. They yeah. are looking to pay $200, $300, yeah. $400, no more than $400 or $500 for, for a dress. bridesmaid dress. Yeah. So I have to make it overseas. Yeah. And that's how you make it work. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, like I do exactly what all these people that is listening, like I do it, all of that. <laughs> I understand all the process, yeah. all the process. Yeah. And it, it's hard, but it's beautiful and i can tell you that i'm i feel so grateful of everything that happened to me all the hard shit that i went through in the beginning yeah because it was bad in the beginning and i was alone i miss my family i had great great success in my country i am in newspapers i'm gonna be in newspapers on monday i'm gonna be in magazines again in in central america and Univision was there last night. Oh yeah. Yeah, covering uh, the At show. At Massive. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow, really? They did a great interview, and I'm so happy. I'm just, you know, I'm so happy to be here also sharing this um, my story because there is a lot of things that I I didn't say also because I don't remember probably in this moment. But it's so much. We can stay here forever. I know we yeah. could. We could. We yeah. Could. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm so grateful. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, no, I mean, this is, you are 150% self-made and self-built and yeah. you really worked your butt off and yeah. still do. Yeah, um, I still You know, do. I mean, you yeah. you deserve it all and you Thanks. should be so proud. Thank you. Um, where can everybody find you and, and learn more about what you're doing online? So my brand is GIA New York, G-I-A New York, the whole thing. Um, and my name is Guillermo Arias, which is, um, they, if they just write Guillermo, I'm sure they're gonna find me. Okay, because, is it yeah. giannewyork.com? Yeah, that's my website, okay. giannewyork.com, yeah. and they can check what I do, yeah. uh, women's wear and men's wear. Yeah, and uh, follow you on Instagram. And follow me on Instagram, and, yeah. and do connections. I'm not, I'm definitely not that kind of bitchy designer. No, you're not, it's no, very clear. No. I think they can tell by now. Yeah, no, 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 that, that you get to meet a lot of you know, people like that in the industry. Yeah. But I believe that being humble, being nice to other people makes everything better in your life. Yeah. And I think that's how God gives me so much because yeah. I learned not yeah. being bitchy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, be happy. That's, yeah. that's the rule of the life. Yeah, be, be work happy hard, be humble, Yeah. enjoy the successes. And work but, hard so yeah. much because it, you need it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to end with the question I ask everybody at the end of the interview, and that yeah. is, what is one thing people never ask you about working in fashion that you wish they would? Um. <laughs> <laughs> that it was easy. What? Like, Hold on. Whoa. No, nah, just kidding. Yeah. No, I would say like... <laughs> Probably the the budget situation, yeah, because it's it's hard, it's so hard. What they see on TV, what they see in in, in TV shows, it's 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 a little different in the real life. It's a lot of things going on, yeah. and a lot of celebrities or people who they just have brands is because they have budget, a lot of budget, but you know. It needs a lot of money. It sells. It's pattern making. It's sample making. It's marketing. It's so much. So whoever is watching or see or listening this, just tomorrow that you're gonna go to your job, see all around and see all the people that is working around you, and see how many people works in that company. All of that, you have to do it when you are just by yourself. Yeah. So if you have the balls to do it, just do it. <laughs> because it's so hard, but it's, you know, it's rewarding. It's, it's beautiful. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. You're amazing. Thank you so much Thank for you. taking the time to chat. This has been lovely. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, click the subscribe button below and give it a thumbs up. And for more free tips, tutorials, and advice on getting ahead in fashion, make sure to head over to SuccessfulFashionDesigner.com and sign up for my email list. I'd also love to hear from you. What was your favorite part of Guillermo's interview? Let me know below in the comments.